Hello Year 2 and welcome to this week's Reading Skills. So as I told you last week, from today we are going to be looking at one of our texts from our Pi Corbett Reading Spine. Um, and it is a book that we have all read before and it's a book that I know Oak Class really enjoyed. I'll tell you more about that in a moment, but just before we start, I'd just like to go over last week's words of the day. Now the first two, as you can see, dirty and equal, they should have been for Monday and Tuesday when we weren't actually in school. But I have included them anyway, just so that we can learn those words if we don't know them already. So the five words are dirty, equal, fuzzy, juicy and swollen. So pause the screen now and just familiarise yourself with those words. Do try and remember what each of them means and maybe you can even try and pop those into a sentence as well. So pause the screen and do that now. OK, let's go through those words then. So the first word that we had was dirty. If something is dirty, it is marked or covered with stains, spots or mud and needs to be clean. So maybe sometimes if you've been out splashing in puddles, you may get a little bit dirty. The second word was equal. So if two things are equal or if one thing is equal to another, they are the same in size, number, standard or value. And I know in maths this week, you have been looking, uh, sorry, maths last week, you were looking at equal groups. So I'm confident you will all know what that one means anyway. The next word for Wednesday was fuzzy. So if something is fuzzy, it has a covering that feels soft and like fur. A fuzzy picture, image or sound is unclear and it is hard um, to see or hear. So last week we were listening to a clip by Florence Nightingale, a voice clip. And I know some of you described that as being quite fuzzy because of how old it is. The next word is juicy. So if food is juicy, it has a lot of juice in it and it is very enjoyable to eat. And finally, our word from Friday was swollen. So if a part of your body is swollen, it is larger and rounder than normal, usually as a result of injury or illness. So if you've ever injured yourself, like knocked your arm or hurt your arm, you might find that your arm goes a little bit swollen. So our text for this week then, and for the next couple of weeks, is Roald Dahl, Fantastic Mr Fox. Now, as I said, we have read this before, so I'm really pleased that we're able to recover this book as well. So you may have a copy of this book at home. And if you do, this would be a great opportunity for you to grab your copy so that you can read along with me. If you don't, however, please don't worry, because I have put um, the different parts that we are going to be looking at up on the screen for us. OK, but if you do, by all means, grab that now. So as it is Monday today, we are going to be doing a rye. So as you know, that is a retrieval question an inference question and an explain question, okay? But before we do that, we will read the first bit of the text, okay? So if you'd like to pause the screen now, you can have a go at reading this yourself first, then unpause and you can read along with me and we will do some core cool reading. So pause the screen now. Okay, let's have a go at reading that together. So, down in the valley, there were three farms. The owners of these farms had done well. They were rich men. They were also nasty men. All three of them were about as nasty and mean as any men you could meet. Their names were Farmer Boggis, Farmer Bunce and Farmer Bean. OK, so just a little bit for us to look at today. I've also just popped that at the top here for when you are answering these questions today, because when you answer them in a moment, it might be a good idea for you to pause just so that you can keep looking at that text and also um, so you can answer your questions. So let's whiz through those now then. So the first one then is our retrieval question. OK, and it says how many farms were in the valley? And what were the farmer's names? Okay, 
Now you might need to reread over that text again, but this one is a retrieval question. So this one you should just be able to pick straight out of the text. Now, as we always do when we're in school, I would like for you to answer that in a full sentence today, okay? And as you can see on the right hand side, I've just put a little, far, um, a little sentence starter for you, okay? So when you answer the first bit of that retrieval question, you've got that first bit that says there were, and then you can tell me how many farms there were in the valley. And then the second part of that question, the three farmers' names were, and then you can pop in the farmers' names on the end of that sentence. Do you remember for those names, you need to put capital letters on them as they are proper nouns. The next question then is an inference question. And the inference question is, how do you think the farmers have done well? Now, as this is an inference question, this one isn't as obvious, okay? And you do have to look for some clues in the text, use your previous knowledge and think to yourself, okay, how do I think that the farmers have done well? There's a few clues in there that might tell us. Again, you've got the sentence starter here. I think the farmers have done well, pause, and you can finish off that sentence. Finally then, our explain question. Why might the author have used alliteration for the farmer's names? Okay, why do you think the, far why do you think the author has done that? Your final question, uh, final sentence starter there. The author might have used alliteration because, okay, um, that will help you form that one. So pause the screen now and have a go at that. When you have finished, I'm just going to read with you the end of this chapter as well. So you can unpause and just have a little listen to the rest of this chapter. So you can do that now. Okay, let's have a look at the end of this chapter then. Boggis was a chicken farmer. He kept thousands of chickens. He was enormously fat. This was because he ate three boiled chickens smothered with dumplings every day for breakfast, lunch and supper. Bunce was a duck and goose farmer. He kept thousands of ducks and geese. He was a kind of pot-bellied dwarf. He was so short that his chin would have been underwater in the shallow end of any swimming pool in the world. His food was donuts and goose livers. He mashed the livers into a disgusting paste and then stuffed the paste into the donuts. This diet gave him a tummy ache and a beastly temper. Do you know what a beastly temper means? So if someone's got a bad temper, that means they're very snappy and angry and moody. Bean was a turkey and apple farmer. He kept thousands of turkeys in an orchard full of apple trees. He never ate any food at all. Instead, he drank gallons of strong cider which he made from the apples in his orchard. He was as thin as a pencil and the cleverest of them all. Now we did talk about in class what cider was. So cider is like a type of beer which is made from apples. So that is what Bean drank. Boggis and Bunce and Bean. One fat, one short, one lean. These horrible crooks, so different in looks, were nonetheless equally mean. That is what the children round about used to sing when they saw them. So that is the end of chapter one. I hope you enjoyed that. Myself and Miss Broadbent look forward to seeing the answers to your questions, which you can ping across to us in the emails. Enjoy the rest of your day, everyone, and I will speak to you all soon. Bye.